I was invited to give the keynote lecture on testicular cancer. Um, and uh, the talk, uh, the topic of the talk is the management of marker negative stage 2A testis cancer. That is a very um, specialized situation which we face in the treatment of testicular cancer. As you probably know, testicular cancer has an extremely good prognosis and more than 90% of patients, even with metastatic disease, are eventually cured of their disease. Marker negative stage 2A represents a particular problem. Stage 2A means these patients have enlarged lymph nodes in the retroperitoneum of somewhere between zero and two centimeters, not larger. That is what we call 2A. Marker negative means that the tumor markers are negative. The tumor markers help us greatly in testis cancer because if the patients with uh, small lymph nodes have positive tumor markers, we know they have disease. If it's marker negative, then we do know from old surgical series that up to 40% of these patients actually don't have tumor in those lymph nodes. They are benign or enlarged lymph nodes or lymph nodes enlarged for other reasons. And that's where the challenge comes because you do not want to treat a patient unless they absolutely need it. And the challenge is here for that stage is, a, is really in the end to correctly identify those patients who are in need of treatment and those patients who are not. So far, we are trying to do that by simply using clinical means. There is no imaging method, not CT scan, not PET scan, not MRI, which can reliably tell us whether a patient has or does not have germ cell tumor. So for the majority of these patients, if we encounter these lymph nodes, we would watch them and see whether they actually grow or not, or if that's not possible or if we are in doubt or if the, the lymph nodes remain stable uh, in certain situations, we advise the patients to undergo surgery to clarify the situation. Um, there are some potential developments on the horizon which may actually help us to improve that situation. Um, there is a lot of research going right now in something called microRNA. Uh, these are non-coding RNAs which regulate oncogenes and suppressor genes. And the tumors actually shed that genetic material into the blood and we can isolate them and measure them. And it appears that a certain microRNA, microRNA 371, is really specific for germ cell tumors. And it behaves as an ideal biomarker should behave. It is measurable when the patient has tumor. It disappears rapidly if the patient is free of tumor. We're currently trying to develop that method because if that really holds what it promises right now, then in the future, if we have a patient like that, we could simply draw a vial of blood, analyze it and say, yes, you do or you don't have tumor. And that would, of course, greatly help us. The reason why we try to avoid over-treatment in patients is because we know whatever we do can have long-term complications. And for chemotherapy and radiation, the most scary consequences of treatment are the development of secondary malignancies or increased cardiovascular risk, all things which we know now can 20, 30 years after successful treatment of a testis cancer um, um, impair the, the, uh, the life expectancy of a patient. If, if you have a marker negative stage 2A, I think the safe thing right now, unless you are absolutely sure that this is tumor, if there's unequivocal evidence that this is tumor, I think, uh, and that's what I do, um, I watch these patients, I tell them, come back in eight weeks, we repeat a CT scan. If the lymph nodes get bigger, then we treat you. If they stay the same, um, then uh, we probably continue to watch you. If they regress, then we continue to watch you. For this particular stage, um, I don't think so. The treatment itself follows the regular, um, the regular um, uh, guidelines for treatment. It's either chemotherapy or surgery for non-seminoma and chemotherapy or radiation for seminoma. Um, in this particular um, <clears throat> circumstance where these patients have lymph nodes less than two centimeters, I actually, uh, particularly for non-seminoma, I prefer uh, often a surgical approach um, because it has the least long-term toxicity and yields excellent outcomes. If, and this is something I would like to emphasize, if the surgery is done in an expert center. 
And this is something which we need to be aware of. Um, there have been good data suggesting that if these types of surgeries are done in community centers which do not have the experience or not enough experience, that the outcomes in terms of relapse rate as well as complication rate goes up. So these patients should be seen in an expert center and uh, operated by an expert surgeon. When we talk about suboptimal treatment, which includes overtreatment or undertreatment, um, we now have data that the treating center actually plays a major role in the outcome of these patients. We now have data from different uh, groups, um, including the French group, the German group, which indicate that there is up to 40-50% up to 40, 50 of patients who are treated outside of expert centers that the treatment is suboptimal. Suboptimal could be that they don't get enough chemotherapy, they get too much chemotherapy, the wrong or missing indication for surgery, and that has been shown. And why is that important? Because all that can impact outcome. Um, and there's data from various groups around the world now. So I think one of the challenges for the treatment of testis cancer in general um, um, for the future is, and I think that is currently probably the low-hanging fruit in terms of how can we improve the outcomes in testis cancer, is that we improve the quality of care on a broad basis and across different geographies. And I think in modern times like this, where you have easy access, where you can upload pathology reports, imaging, uh, on, on, and digitalize them so that anybody in the world can see them. I think all these new technologies um, um, give us the opportunity to actually um, do that without having every patient be seen at an expert center, because that is not always possible. But I think if you have the appropriate infrastructure, you can contact a, an expert center and ask for advice or just for a discussion of a treatment plan.